As someone who truly appreciates deep work, nothing drains my battery more than mindless tasks like fishing receipts out of my email during tax season. That's why I'm very excited about OpenAI's Operator, an autonomous agent that completes your tasks using a browser just like a human would. It clicks and scrolls and inputs text and navigates from screen to screen until the job is done. It's not perfect yet, but even as a proof of concept, it's a lot more promising than previous failed projects like the Rabbit R1. The reason is it doesn't rely on brittle API integrations, but rather learns to navigate graphical user interfaces the way a human would. In this video, we'll talk about the AI technology behind OpenAI's operator and similar agents. It's full of intellectual candy. We'll talk about multimodal models, imitation learning, and reinforcement learning. So let's get started. I'll fast forward through a quick demo just to give you a sense of the overall experience. Here, I'm prompting it to help me buy ingredients to make pasta bolognese. The way it works is OpenAI spins up a virtual machine on their servers, starts a browser, and streams it to you in real time. Overall, it's a collaborative experience where both you and the agent take turns to control the browser. On the left-hand side, there's a running conversation between you and operator. That's where it occasionally asks you for clarifications or permissions and where you can make comments or give it new instructions. You can also see it updating its current reasoning depending on what's on the screen. It's remarkable that it asks for your input at the right time before sensitive actions like checking out or when it needs additional information like your address. It basically acts as an assistant, so I can see a future version where you can directly talk to it without even looking at the browser. Even though Operator made headlines in the last month, OpenAI is not the only one working on agents that can control your device. In fact, Anthropic released computer use at the end of last year, which takes control over not just the browser, but the entire computer. You can see it here autonomously interacting with a Linux virtual machine. But in contrast to OpenAI, Anthropic also released a set of APIs so that you can build your own agent by making calls to Claude. And of course, both of these companies sit on the shoulders of many public research efforts and open source projects, which is the reason why we can actually make informed guesses about how they work under the hood. So let's unbox it. You've surely heard of large language models or LLMs, which are AI models that operate on text inputs and outputs. For instance, OpenAI's GPT models up to version 3 and Meta's Llama models up to version 3.1. But in order to emulate the way humans interact with computers, models also need to understand what's displayed on the screen. And since LLMs can't read screenshots, people initially tried to feed the HTML structure instead. But it turns out that HTML is very messy and it can be hard to figure out the visibility and relative positions of the elements. So it wasn't a great hack. Instead, researchers bit the bullet and built what we call multimodal models, which can process both text and images inside the same neural network. That's the case for OpenAI's models starting with GPT-4 and Meta's models starting with Llama 3.2. These multimodal models have been around for a while. In fact, ChatGPT switched to GPT-4, which is multimodal, back in 2023. And at the time, you probably weren't thinking of it as this action-taking agent. I know I didn't. So when and how did we make the leap from multimodal models, which can ingest and output information in various modalities, to these agents that can complete tasks on your browser autonomously? In early 2024, multiple research labs discovered that GPT-4 by itself can already act as a pretty good web agent with absolutely no additional training. In fact, a carefully crafted system prompt describing how humans interact with browsers is already coercing it to emulate human behavior. So when asked what should be done next on the current screen, it will recommend an action in freeform language like visit the Walmart store. The challenge is to ground this into an action that can be executed programmatically in the browser. Here, we need to figure out that GPT-4 is referring to this Walmart button over here and that we need to click some pixel inside of it. And researchers tried various heuristics for grounding. Here, I'm showing you a grounding technique called set of mark, where we programmatically draw bounding boxes around interactive HTML elements on the screen and also assign a unique ID to each box. 
So instead of feeding the raw screenshot to the model, we give it annotated screenshots and ask it to include the element ID in its response so that we can tie back each suggested action to a specific pixel on the screen. But even so, grounding is still not perfect. For more robustness, we'd have to fine tune the multimodal model end to end to directly predict the action. This is something that big companies have the budget to do. OpenAI fine tuned GPT 4.0 into an agent they boringly called computer using agent. This is what powers operator. While Anthropic fine tuned Claude 3 into an agent called computer use. I just wanted to chime in with a quick disclaimer. Obviously, both OpenAI and Anthropic are closed source. So we don't know exactly how they're building these models. But there are clues in their blog posts, and there's also a lot of open source research from which it's safe to assume that they're taking inspiration. So take this as my best guess around what's happening behind closed doors. I think these models were fine-tuned in at least two steps. The first one is called imitation learning because the model literally learns to imitate action by action how humans use the computer in recorded demos. Imitation learning gives the model a base level of ability. For instance, if in the demo, the human clicks on the Walmart button, the model will learn that certain regions of the screen, and buttons in particular, are worth paying more attention to than the white space or the banner image. But of course, there's a limit to how many demos humans can produce manually. We could also generate demos programmatically. In fact, it looks like Anthropic did so with basic computer tools like a calculator and a text editor. But even these synthetic demos still need to be scripted by humans, and they won't cover all scenarios you'd encounter in real life when using a computer. The true power comes from reinforcement learning. That means the agent is no longer shown the right sequence of activities to reach a goal. It's simply allowed to try things and at the very end of the session, it's given feedback on whether it successfully completed the task. Very similar to how we train models to play chess or Minecraft. When we allow trial and error, the model implicitly learns how to react to unexpected events that might not have been captured in the demo, like pop-ups, for instance. And it also learns to backtrack when it goes down a wrong path. For instance, here it selected the wrong birth date, but it keeps retrying and eventually gets it right. To make recovery possible, these agents don't only look at the current screenshot, but also keep track of a truncated history of previous screenshots and actions. When stuck, this allows them to do a post-mortem and figure out how to get back to a good previous state from where they can recover. Another crucial behavior enabled by reinforcement learning is that operator gives back control to the user before sensitive actions with external side effects like purchasing something or sending an email. Here's how the safety mechanism is taught through reinforcement learning. Normally, an agent goes through an entire sequence of actions and at the very end receives a reward that reflects whether the task was completed successfully. This is just standard reinforcement learning. However, to infuse a particular behavior like asking for confirmation before a sensitive action, OpenAI uses rule-based reinforcement learning. They add something like a screenshot sensitivity classifier, which decides whether the current screen requires user input. Here, the checkout screen would be singled out. And at this point, the agent will receive a positive reward if it chooses to give control back to the user and a negative reward otherwise. This two-stage approach is very similar to how humans learn to use technology. We first observe others, and then we go and explore on our own. We're witnessing the dawn of a completely new generation of assistants that go well beyond handwritten rules and brutal API integrations, and they truly act as human secretaries. What I find most interesting is how far the open source alternatives have gone by simply reusing GPT-4 in smart ways with no additional training whatsoever. This tells us that the technology that we have today might actually be underutilized and Maybe the bottleneck is our own imagination. I'm sure that web agents are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to automating away boring stuff that we don't want to do. If you've made it this far, thank you. I'd love to hear in the comments how you feel about the level of detail in this video, whether you'd like a higher level overview, demos, or even more technical details. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.